Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Monday, August 26, 2024. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Well, all in all, it was a slight, and I repeat slight, down day by one quarter of 1%, a dollar 34 by the end of the day in the SPY. Looking at the big picture, what's she actually doing? Well, let's start with above all the moving averages, she's bullish. Therefore, trend is your friend until your shit gets thrown out the window. Item number two, she's approaching the all time highs. She's been approaching the all time highs for several days. The market is essentially edging higher with pullbacks along the way. That's what she's doing, taking it at face value. There's your all-time high. The actual number is 565.16. The high, as an example today, was 563.91. So basically, this is like a 60-degree wedge away from the all-time highs. Would we be surprised to see a pullback before the all-time highs? No, we wouldn't. Would we be surprised to see the all-time highs before a pullback? No, we wouldn't. We don't know which one is going to happen. We take it one day at a time. We're going to make the assumption at this stage of the contest that they're going to reach the all-time highs and poke their head above. How much higher? I have some general ideas. We'll cover that when and if. She does make an all-time high and closes above the all-time high. I've done the mathematics. Let's talk for a second about a couple of known knowns and the unknown. We don't know about the unknown, but we can talk about the known knowns. For example, the market was looking for the Fed to say, hey, we're going to start cutting interest rates. We're going to turn the spigot back on on the money flow liquidity into the market. Last week at Jackson Hole, the banker boondoggle, the market got what they were looking for. The market, in my opinion, ran up into that event expecting, the expectations were that the Fed is going to reverse policy and begin cutting interest rates. That's what the market wanted. That's what the market's getting now. What's the next thing that's going to drive the market higher? That's the $64,000 question from this point forward. Don't you think? Think about it like this. Let's jam the market up as we believe the Fed is going to cut rates in the near term. Now we know the Fed is going to cut rates in the near term. So what's the next thing that makes the next arrow go upward above the all-time high and to new highs? Is it the ending of the war between Israel and Hamas and all that stuff with Iran going on over there? Probably not because the market didn't go down on that news. So why would it go up if they resolve the issue? It wouldn't. What about Russia and the Ukraine? Nobody cares anymore. It's out of the news cycle. Inflation? Eh, the story is inflation is tame. We've got it under control. Nothing to see over here. Move it along. Inflation is old news. In order for the market to get surprised, it needs new news. Hence, the unknown, what's going on with the automagical lazy swing trader system? Let's check out UAL. Why? Because we hit second profit target today. Buy alert issued at the low, 3703. Second profit target taken today, 17 plus percent from entry at $42.80. How you doing? Lazy Swing Trader, Automagical Algo System. Second exit today. How about Geiss? So the entry was $63.41. We've already taken first profit. It was already a risk-free, emotionless trade. 12.4% from entry is second profit target today at $71.25. How you doing? Funny how that was not far from high of day. Lazy Swing Trader Automagical Algo System. What's going on over in Camp IWM? By the end of the day, they had what's called a flat as a pancake type of situation. Up seven cents on close, that's a flat day. 
the market is running a test in the vicinity of a breakdown candle high. You can see this is, let's just call it the top 25%, 20%, whatever it is. They're up in that neighborhood. Maybe they go higher. Maybe that's it. Once they start getting up into the neighborhood of the breakdown candle high, the awareness meter comes out and says, hey, they're running a test in the neighborhood of a breakdown candle high, a big time breakdown candle high, mind you. Doesn't mean they will or won't get to the high. They like to run a test of the high. Doesn't mean every time they do, our awareness meter gets activated when they get in the neighborhood slash vicinity of the high. When you flip over to the weekly chart, you could see it pretty clear as day. This is a big time weekly chart breakdown slash reversal candle high, period. Yes, they're above all the moving averages. The trend is your friend. The trend is up, but they are coming into a very important area that was rejected not too long ago. The market knows, the market told us that it's a very important area. So we will heed that information. Now, what about the folks down at the transportation department? Now, they did something interesting by the end of last week. They had a ramp up into the close on Friday. They closed above, not for the first time, but for another time above that trend line coming from the triangular pattern closing weekly above. Now, they haven't closed weekly above yet until last week. They closed daily above back here, but not weekly above. That's the first weekly close. Now, you know the story with the folks down at the transportation department. They are my A number one, Canary in the Coal Mine. Second favorite market leading indicator next to Camp IWM, but A number one, Canary in the Coal Mine. Write this down, put it on a sticky note in front of your screen. If they stay above this trend line, and it's not just a one or two day wonder, if they stay above, they're going to start creeping higher into this area where these pivot highs come into play. They're not that far away. You start to get into the area of the big time breakdown candle high, pivot highs, these highs. That is a natural place that the bulls will want to get to and run a test of. What about the Q people? Down about 1% today, about four and a half bucks, give or take. We're going to gauge it for now about being above or not above all the moving averages. Right now, they're teetering on the 50 period daily chart moving average. Come under that, and what does it open the door to? It opens the door to the next place of significance in the sequence. Now, mind you, this isn't germane. I like that word, germane, just to the QQQ itself. This is a lesson in how charts work because all charts work or all charts act and react the same way. So when you find a similar setup, the same type of setup on another chart, it doesn't matter what the name is, doesn't matter it's the Qs, could be the Spider, could be IBM, Apple, could be NVIDIA, could be anything under the sun, the same things are going to apply where the next major area of consequence is this Breakup candle low, which is the entrance to, what do I call this? No man's land. Why is that? Because once you get into no man's land, the door gets opened or unlocked down to the gap that exists all the way down here. In this case, around 462 and change. Staying above this black line, for example, above this breakup candle low, keeps the band playing on. They can pull back. They can eat time off the clock in this upper range here and then have another, when they're finished, eating time off the clock and building energy, they can have another rally to the upside after doing what? Right, after recocking the gun, resetting the tape. You can see how that projects out. Let's say they have another couple of days down here. They're bantering back and forth. And all of a sudden, you've been kind of pulling back in a consolidative type format for five, six, seven days. Next scene shows there's another rally to the upside. They go up to fill this gap or they go up to make another challenge inside this no man's land area. Something like that would be in the cards. This is a pullback in an uptrend until it's not. Gabish?
What about the financials? Anything wrong with the financials? They're at new highs. There's nothing wrong with the financials. Is that a sign and or signal of a trend change? A tail candle at new highs that finishes in a doji formation? And the answer is technically, yeah, it's in the book. It's on the books. It's on the docket. It's on the table. But you do not, and I repeat, do not, underlined, have accompanying reversal type volume. However, you can say that this technically is a sign and or signal of a trend change. So what do you do from here? You say, all right, we'll check this out. We'll just use the former highs as the bogey. A, can they come back and run a test of the former high, which is the most recent breakout area, repeat after me, that's exactly right. So they can get above, they come back to run a test of the most recent breakout area, and if they stay above, that's bullish and they can continue higher. If they come back and they go back below or inside that black line or the most recent breakout area, that may be at least a short-term or interim top signified by a sign or signal of a trend change, the type of stuff that's taught in the course, lazy e-mini trader. How do you like them apples? What about Smash Mouth down about 2.3% today, almost six bucks. So here's the situation with Smash Mouth. Is it a canary? It can be. Is it a pretty good tell for the tech space? Yes, it is. Can the tech space bring down the overall market? Yes, it can. The SMH is nowhere near the all-time highs. We have a lower high situation, can't even recapture the 50 period moving average. So we're going to put this on the table as a puzzle piece and certainly looking at it as a canary-ish situation, canary in the coal mine. Is this a tell that things may not be as rosy as some of the other charts and or markets might have you to believe? We're going to do things slightly out of order tonight. Why is that? Because I realized I skipped over inside the numbers. I forgot to show the information. And since I'm an open book concept, I don't want to skip that over. I want to show what was inside the numbers today. How did we do in the live room? How did we do inside the numbers? Did anybody make money? Let's go find out. Let's check out the Zero Dark 30 commentary and start there. We're approaching the all-time highs, so there's not much stuff up here. So we have a resistance zone between 546.40, 564, should be 546.85, that's transposed. And then you have the all-time high at 565.16. We looked at this before, there's no revelation here. But we do have a big-time number coming in at 563.18. That becomes our pivot. What does our pivot mean? It means if she's above, that's bullish. If she's not above, it doesn't have to be bearish, rug pull, collapse situation, but certainly the market is free to come down some. It's free to pull back some. It's a pivot, meaning bullish above, not below. Let's see what else we have as the day starts to get underway, starts to unfold. Here we are a half hour before the open at 9 o'clock. A lot of reiterating of the same stuff, hanging around. They didn't do much hanging around that Breakdown candle high, 563.18, give or take. That's the big time spot. Above, she's going to push toward the highs into another resistance area, but below, she can fall. We have a gap down here left open Friday. We have another number down here. We have more numbers as the day goes on. So she never got up into the resistance zone for a short trade or a short scalp with potential so that she started to fall we're looking for places where the market can bounce what are the numbers where she can bounce the tape pause the video read the notes go back to the chart and double check the work 562.10 is the gap left open Friday I'm not enamored with the gap most of the time everybody knows about the gap I like them to spike the gap my zone was 561.30 down about a buck there's your zone, 560.130, down about a buck. They went down about a buck, bounced it back to the first number, bantered back and forth. And you can see, this was basically the zone of support the majority of the day once they declined from a test of said breakdown candle high. What's the breakdown candle high? It's this one from the other day, just to reiterate. The high is 563.18. This is the information that inside the member members and live room members get right out of the shoot each and every day. Very important location-based information. 
pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. Now, what happens if they get below 560.30? What's the next thing down? I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm giving you all the numbers as we go through the morning session. How about 559.40? And there it is, 559.40, came into it, spiked it a little bit, bounced them back in the other direction. It pays to know your numbers. Pause them, read them, go back to the chart to double check the work. Everything that a trader needs, if they're so inclined to be trading in the S&P, the ES, the micros, options on the ES, options on the SPY, exchange traded products, it doesn't matter. These are directional trades. If you are trading in the S&P during the trading day, this is information that can help you be successful, period, full stop. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.